On Saturday, September 24, 2005, Sally spent most of her day visiting her mother. Later, her older sister Nicole called her and invited her to a friend's birthday party. Sally agreed, leaving her mother's house around 6 p.m., bidding her affectionate goodbyes. But that was the last goodbye she ever said. Hi there, we're Unsolved Cases, and we cover unsolved crime stories from all around the world. If you like this type of content, then consider subscribing to our channel, as we bring never-seen crime stories to you, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to get notified whenever we upload a new episode. In the chilling tale from 2005 that sent shockwaves through Britain, a heinous crime unfolded, leaving the entire nation in disbelief. It revolved around a young woman who, by the age of 18, had already carved a promising career in modeling. Tragically, her life was cut short when her lifeless body was discovered just meters from her own doorstep. The relentless efforts of law enforcement finally cracked the case, thanks to a minuscule DNA sample. Around 1 a.m., Sally left the bar in the company of her sister. They headed to her house, but her stay was brief. On her way, she reached out to her ex-boyfriend, Louis Sportster, arranging to meet him in downtown Croydon around 2.30 a.m. Sally hopped into a cab and proceeded to the designated spot. During their meeting, a heated argument ensued, rooted in their recent breakup and unresolved issues. Louis eventually offered her a ride home to Blenheim Crescent, but the argument persisted. The tense conversation between the former couple continued until approximately 4.15 a.m. when Sally decided to exit the vehicle and head home. Around the same time, nearby residents were stirred from their slumber by an unusual noise that escalated into screams. They peered out of their windows but saw nothing suspicious. Five minutes later, they noticed an unknown man strolling down the street. At approximately 6.30 a.m., a resident emerged from their home, catching sight of something unsettling behind a nearby construction container. Initially mistaking it for a mannequin's legs, they drew closer to a harrowing discovery. The lifeless, partially unclothed body of a woman. It was Sally Bowman. Swiftly, the police arrived at the scene, cordoning off the area. Although the murder weapon remained elusive, forensic experts later uncovered DNA from an unidentified man on Sally's body. What was initially mistaken for Sally returning home turned into the devastating realization of her tragic murder when police officers arrived at her mother's doorstep. Hours later, Sally's mother and sister made the painful trip to the morgue to identify her lifeless body, clinging to a hope that it was all a dreadful mistake until they saw her, confirming the unimaginable truth. The absence of surveillance cameras in the area added to the challenge. It became clear that Sally had been tragically killed just a short distance from her own front door shortly after leaving her car. Suspicion naturally fell on her ex-boyfriend Lewis, as he was the last person to see her alive, and their past quarrels had escalated to police involvement on occasion. Lewis was promptly arrested and questioned, but he claimed to have been unaware of Sally's death until informed by detectives. While he admitted to their altercation that night, he vehemently denied any involvement in the murder. After spending four days in custody, DNA test results cleared him of suspicion. Interestingly, the DNA found on Sally's body matched a sample from a 2001 case where an individual had committed inappropriate acts near the crime scene, leaving behind biological evidence. A breakthrough finally occurred unexpectedly in a local pub, where Mark Dixie, 35, engaged in a drunken argument that escalated into a street scuffle. Police officers intervened and arrested Dixie, but his reaction raised suspicions. Despite facing a minor offense, Dixie exhibited unusual panic, which puzzled the arresting officers. After being fingerprinted and providing a DNA sample as part of standard procedures for detainees, Dixie was released on bail. Twelve days later, the lab made a shocking discovery. Mark Dixie's DNA was an exact match to the sample found on Sally's body. The authorities realized they had a dangerous serial offender on their hands, but were compelled to release him due to legal constraints. Shortly thereafter, Dixie fled to Amsterdam. The British authorities issued a search warrant for Mark Dixie, and after three months on the run, he unexpectedly returned to England following a dispute with the owner of the apartment he rented in Amsterdam. Dixie even resumed working at his previous job, which made it easier for the police to locate and arrest him on June 28, 2006, nearly a year after the murder. He was subsequently charged with multiple serious offenses. As investigators delved into his criminal history, they discovered that Dixie's activities dated back to 1986 when he was just 16 years old. Over the years, he had committed a series of crimes, including robbery, molestation, and assault. Despite multiple arrests, he often received lenient sentences, allowing him to continue his criminal activities. In 1993, he moved to Australia, where he continued his unlawful behavior. However, due to the absence of DNA collection from criminals at the time, his DNA did not appear in existing databases. 
Dixie's trial began on February 5, 2008, during which he denied his involvement in the murder, concocting an implausible story. He claimed to have found Sally lying on the ground, took advantage of the situation to abuse her, and left, suggesting that someone else had killed her. Nevertheless, the jury unanimously found him guilty of Sally's murder, and he was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 34 years. Despite his initial denials, Dixie confessed his involvement in the crime in 2015.